I cannot read a Joanne Fluke Hannah Swenson mystery without wanting to eat or bake something. And today, it's all about molasses crackles. Stay tuned. Mm. Hello, outrageous ones. I don't know about you, but I love to read. I love to read and I love to bake. Therefore, I also love to eat. And if I can find a book that inspires me to cook or has recipes in it, I am all in. And I have found one murder mystery writer, Joanne Fluke, who includes recipes in her books. The book that I'm going to be referring to today is The Strawberry Shortcake Murder and all of her books have some kind of murder mystery to them and they're also all kinds of good desserts and just great dishes. And I was reading one of her books and someone happened to notice and they told me they had read this book that had this recipe for these cookies that were just out of this world. And every time she reads one of her books all she wants to do is eat cookies and drink coffee. And so I had to read the book and then of course we had to try the recipe. And I tell you ladies and jelly beans, the molasses crackles in this recipe book do not disappoint. Every time I make them, they come out wonderful. And that's what we're going to do today. I've listed the ingredients down below, but you're going to start by mixing your melted butter and your sugar. And then you're going to add your molasses. And once again, I cannot say enough about this Pampered Chef mix, uh, measure cup. It just, anything goopy, gloppy, slick. If you put it in there, it'll come out and you'll get all your most of your ingredients in your um, just whatever you're making without leaving it all over the sides of the cup. And it takes a while, but you're going to want to stir to incorporate your um, all of your things. The eggs are in there now, and you're just going to stir it up until you get everything incorporated and give it a little chance to cool off. And then you're going to add your baking soda, salt, cinnamon, nutmeg. Well, bacon, soda, and salt, excuse me. Then your spices. And then you're just going to go through and add a cup at a time the flour, and you're going to incorporate it as you go. And the dough will get stiff. Um, it does take a strong arm. And uh, if you want to also train your brain while you're baking cookies, you can use your left hand or your non-dominant hand to stir and work the non-dominant muscle and get your brain going to make sure you're scraping around the edges. And I have to give a shout out to my girl Sue because I am using this lovely fall spatula that she gave me. It is super strong and I had no problems mixing the dough with it. So love you, Sue, and thank you so much for my spatula. I have used it for every baking thing I have done this fall. So now that we have it mixed, it smells so good. And that's what it looks like when it's made up. We're going to cover it and we're gonna chill it in the fridge for about an hour and then we're gonna get messy. See what I mean by messy? So I have rolled all the dough, I have put it in the sugar and just a heads up to keep you from getting too sticky in between rolling the dough, you can always put your hands in the sugar to kinda dry them out a little bit and add a little extra sugar. So this makes about 43. You can probably get more, but I started making bigger ones as I went. And what you're going to do is just um, 
you're just going to press them down so they're kind of flat. You see these are monster cookies because it was right at the end and they're going to spread out all over the pan. And we're going to bake on we're going to bake these for at 350 for 10 to 12 minutes and then we'll set them on a cooling rack. Oh my gosh, the house is going to smell so good. If you like this video, click that like button and if you'd like to subscribe, that would be great as well. These cookies are wonderful. They smell so good all through the house. Unfortunately, they don't stay around for very long. So hopefully you'll read, eat, enjoy, and as always, stay outrageous. Mm -hmm.